everyone. Uh, welcome to Azure Cosmos DB Conference 2024. My name is Tina Adnani, and today I'll be talking on building eventually consistent applications with Azure Cosmos DB. Now, whenever you talk about building distributed systems, there are different quality attributes that we commonly try to achieve in modern software architecture design. We want it to be cloud native, we want to build reactive systems, it should be scalable, high performing, you know, should have high availability, low latency, and then on top of it, we want loose coupling, agility, so on and so forth. Oh, and I forgot, cost efficient, right? But ultimately, we want to build these resilient systems that can withstand surges, failures, and attacks without compromising on data integrity. But what we need to understand is that getting these quality attributes in your application is not an easy job. There are challenges. Let's understand this with a scenario. Let's imagine we are building an e-commerce site. So we have a customer who places an order. And for that customer, we need to generate an invoice. There are other components as well, like delivery, payment, notification. But for now, let's only talk about how these two components can be connected. Now, in this first approach, which is orchestrated request-based pattern, uh, after a user places an order, we save the order details. And then we send that order to an invoice service to kick off invoice processing. Now note how tightly coupled both these services are. And the order service, it attempts to orchestrate that entire distributed transaction. And as you see, this process introduces latency and an additional responsibility on the order service. Let's try an alternative approach. In this, we'll decouple the order processing flow from the invoice creation. So after a user places an order, we simply save the order details in the order service. And then rather than immediately trying to create an invoice, we instead have a background job or a process that periodically checks for new or updated orders. And when it finds them, it asynchronously creates or updates the corresponding invoice. So by decoupling these two steps, which is order fulfillment and invoice processing, we reduce latency for the users which are facing the order service, and they get a happier experience placing their orders. However, this approach introduces delay or temporary inconsistency before invoices are created for new orders. Now let's go a step further and make this an event-based pattern. So in this event-driven approach, like the earlier one, we move away from direct service-to-service -service communication, but the difference here is that each service, it emits ev events that others can listen or react upon. So for example, when a user places an order, the order service saves the order details and it emits an order created event onto the event stream. And the invoice service is essentially more like subscribing to these order created events. So when it receives an order created event, it uses the order data to create a new invoice record. Now this has some good advantages. First, you get independent scaling of each service because they are no longer tightly coupled. Services can be added or updated to handle new events without disrupting others. Also, because each service is doing its work asynchronously in parallel, so you get performance advantages. And even from an operational perspective, this approach provides a full audit log of the state changes via that immutable event stream, which can simplify debugging and also allow rebuilding projections. So all, so far, so good. You're getting performance, you're getting scalability and availability, but there is a trade-off. And that trade-off is eventual consistency, that there will be temporary disparities between orders and invoices until events are processed. And in this session, we are talking about how to deal with eventual consistency while building these distributed systems or event-driven systems using Azure Cosmos DB. Yes, Azure Cosmos DB makes it easy to build highly responsive and scalable apps with flexible consistency choices. So first, let's talk about some key features about Azure Cosmos DB. It's globally distributed, uh, enables you to replicate your data across multiple Azure regions worldwide, also ensures la low latency data access for the users. Then you have multimodal APIs, so Azure Cosmos DB, it supports multiple data models like document data, key value pairs, graph data, columnar data, 
all within the same Azure Cosmos DB account. You also get automatic and instant scalability. So Azure Cosmos DB, it offers virtually unlimited and elastically scalable throughput across any number of Azure regions with no application downtime. And you get guaranteed high availability in the event of regional outages. Now, coming to consistency models in Azure Cosmos DB. So one of the cool things about distributed database platforms is that they are no more what they used to be a decade ago. Like earlier, we just used to have two consistency levels, strong consistency and weak consistency. But you know what I love about Azure Cosmos DB is that they have five consistency levels. And when I was starting to explore Azure Cosmos DB, I was so excited because I had many different use cases wherein I used to hack around consistency. And I was like, this is so cool. So coming to consistency levels, you have one, a strong consistency, which means that if you have a write and you do a read, no matter where you are, you are basically going to get the last write. So you lose nothing. Then you have bounded staleness. It means that you're always going to lag a little bit behind your writes. And you can lag either by number of commits or by time, let's say five or 10 milliseconds behind the latest. And then the third one, session consistency. The most popular one of all the five, I'll guess, because uh, let's understand this with the scenario. Uh, say you went on amazon.com, you added your review, and you were able to see it immediately because they give you session level consistency. However, if someone else goes there and looks for the same review comment that you added, it might not be there for, let's say, another 5, 10, or 15 seconds. And that's OK, because um, you're using session consistency, so there's a trade-off. Then you have the fourth one, which is consistent prefix. And as you can say, the name automatically states that there's going to be some kind of ordering. And this is exactly what it is. Basically, it is that you may be behind, but you will never be out of order in terms of consistent prefix. And then you have eventually consistent. Now, in this, you can be completely out of order when you are doing reads. And it's fine because uh, it's the loosest consistency, but it's also the least expensive in terms of throughput. And that's why it's called as eventual consistency. One more point that I would like to call out here is that Azure Cosmos DB, it provides these tunable consistency levels on a per request basis, allowing engineers to balance latency, throughput, and consistency as per application needs. Now, let's also talk about how can we change the consistency model using our SDKs. Again, a couple of points to note here. One, you cannot increase the strength of the consistency model used. So let's say if you are using session level consistency for your application and uh, you want to, I don't know, you want a strong consistency for a particular request, you can't do that. So only thing that you can do is you can reduce the consistency model. And then the question that comes to mind is, why would you do that? And there is actually a very good scenario for this. So let's say you've got a workload which is using strong or bounded stainless uh, level of consistency and uh, you want to spin up a new instance of Cosmos client, and uh, you want to ingest a whole bunch of data and do it rather quickly. Now, if you're using strong consistency, your latency is going to be quite painful because you have to ingest a whole bunch of data and then do it quickly because it's going to commit first to your right region and then to all other regions before coming back. So your latency is not going to be awesome. But what you can do in this scenario is you, when you're creating a new instance of the SDK client, you drop the consistency level to, let's say, eventual, as you're seeing on the code snippet here on the slide, and then ingest all your data in that session with eventual consistency. Okay, and your data will get, in, will get inserted, but because it's eventual consistency, you will not be able to see it right then and there, but eventually it will catch up. Then the second point that I want to call out is that the consistency only applies to the read parts here. So uh, when we say consistency, it is that guarantee, right? So where that guarantee is made, it is made on the reads and not on the writes. Only for strong consistency, it's indirectly for writes as well. But for others, the guarantee is made on the reads. So like you saw on this snippet here, when you once you set the consistency level to eventual, 
then the next step, what you're going to do is, uh, since you have set your request options to eventual, then when you do a read item async within here, and of course, you're going to pass the ID, uh, the partition key and your request option, and you're going to get the result based on the consistency level that you have set. Now, let's take a look at some best practices for eventual consistency that you can incorporate in your programming while building your application. I've listed five of them here. But there are more, but for the purpose of this session, let's look at these five in more detail. Number one, handling inconsistent reads. Now, in an eventual consistent system, you may encounter stale or inconsistent data during reads. So it's the responsibility of your application to gracefully handle these situations. So what are the things that you can do to handle these situations? Like, you know, always query with session tokens so that you see the latest write. So for scenarios like shopping carts, where you need to immediately read the data that you have just written, you can use session tokens because these session tokens will provide a read your write consistency without a, within a session, ensuring that you always read the latest data that you've written. So if you look at this code snippet, what you're doing here is first you're creating an item. It means that you're doing a write. Then from the response header, you pick the session token and you set that up in your request option. And after that, whenever you do the read and you pass in the request option, it ensures that you are getting the latest write that you just wrote in that session. Now, coming to the second point, conflict resolution. So another thing that you can do when you have multi-region write is to handle conflict resolution. Now, why is that necessary? So with multiple write regions, conflicting updates can occur before replication catches up. And it basically happens when writers concurrently update the same item in multiple regions. The good thing is that Azure Cosmos DB provides automatic conflict resolution policies like last, last writer win or custom. So what you see on the screen here is how you can set the conflict resolution mode as last writer win. And when you set it as last writer win, in that case, it will take the last writer based on either the timestamp field or, you know, you can call it the underscore TS property. Then you can also set the conflict resolution as a custom policy, again, as you see on the screen. And when you do this, when you set the policy on your Azure Cosmos DB container, you also need to register a merge stored procedure. And this stored procedure is automatically invoked when conflicts are detected under a database transaction on the server. But what happens when you configure your container, let's say with this custom resolution option, and you fail to register a merge procedure, or maybe the merge procedure throws a runtime exception? In that case, the conflicts are written to the conflicts feed. Your application then needs to manually resolve the conflicts in the conf conflicts feed. And as you can see in the code snippet, we are defining our own logic for how we want the conflicts to be resolved. OK, coming to the next point, we have idempotency, a very common best practice. Uh, so what is recommended is that you design your write operations to be idempotent meaning that they can be safely retried without causing unintended side effects. And this is also crucial, you know, when you're dealing with network outages, transient errors, things like that. So again, what you see on this slide is an example that by using upthird item instead of create item, we can execute the same command multiple times without causing changes unless you're making an update. Then you have asynchronous programming another best practice. So it's always recommended that you embrace asynchronous programming patterns when working with Azure Cosmos DB. So, you know, you can use the async await pattern in .NET or the appropriate asynchronous construct in your language of choice. And yeah, I would like to reiterate that these are some common best practices that you can do while you're doing programming. So do use them. Okay, and the fifth one, coming to change feed triggers. Now, this is really important, especially in building reactive models, because instead of constantly polling for data changes or dealing with you know, complex synchronization logic, the change feed gives you a reliable stream of all the inserts, updates, and deletes which are happening in your Cos Azure Cosmos DB container. Like, think of it having a live feed of everything happening in your database. So 
while building applications using Cosmos DB, see if change feed fits the scenario. And if yes, then do build using this functionality. OK, so now coming back to the scenario that we originally started with, if we were to see how we can build this async PubSub messaging part, ensuring eventual consistency, how can we do it? So uh, one such pattern you can see that we have created using Azure Cosmos DB, which acts like our persistent data store and handles eventual consistency with respect to the different events that get stored in it and also replicated for multi-region capabilities. Also see how we have used change feed here. So instead of dealing with complex two-way synchronization, we simply have the invoice service or any other service that you see here consume the change feed from the events catalog persisted in Azure Cosmos DB. So change feed actually acts as a powerful tool for building event-driven architectures where services can subscribe to and react to data changes, decoupling them from each other while still maintaining eventual consistency across the distributed landscape. And this is a Microsoft recommended pattern using Azure Functions and Azure Cosmos DB to build these globally distributed scalable serverless application. So a customer basically places an order in an e-commerce website. The order triggers an Azure function. That Azure function processes the customer's checkout, stores information about the order in Azure Cosmos DB. And that database insert operation, it triggers an Azure Cosmos DB change feed event. So all the systems that are subscribing to the change feed are notified. With that, we come to an end. Uh, to summarize, all I want to say is that, remember, we need to design our systems to gracefully work with the challenges of eventual consistency. Like, you know, you have to cater for outdated data, conflicts, uh, potential concurrency anomalies in your data, and events or operations when they come out of order. But even though these challenges may seem daunting, they are manageable if you follow the best practices and patterns that we covered, like using session tokens, change feed, et cetera. And just to add a little bit of humor to this serious topic, here is a funny illustration by Pascal Jocelyn that perfectly captures the essence of eventual consistency. With that, I'm going to leave you with some resources uh, to help you build eventually consistent apps on Azure Cosmos DB. If you haven't tried Azure Cosmos DB yet, please try. It's free without any credit card option. Uh, you also find a whole bunch of tutorials and documentation on MS Learn. And if you want to take the uh, speciality path to certification, we also have a special certification for it. And uh, thank you. Uh, my contact details are on this slide. Please connect with me on LinkedIn for any conversations on working with eventual consistency in Azure Cosmos DB or distributed architecture or Azure in general. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.